Louis C.K. is a very funny comedian, producer, and Emmy-winning writer whose credits include The Chris Rock Show, Saturday Night Live, and the screenplay for the film Pootie Tang, Sarate. His latest project is the upcoming film The Invention of Lying, which opens in theaters October 2nd. Here now some scenes from The Invention of Lying. Tell me about The Invention of Lying, Louis. Well, it's a <laughs> movie directed by Ricky Gervais and Matt Robertson. They also wrote the uh, screenplay together. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, <clears throat> it's about a world an alternate universe kind of where nobody's ever told a lie right. like it's never occurred to anyone to do it so this guy gets the power to lie mm -hmm. and because no one's ever done it anything he says is taken as pure gospel so it's a it, it's a really well well done premise yeah I, I imagine that a world with without lying yeah yeah so so what do you what do you make of what our world would be like if nobody could lie well there wouldn't be any pretense yeah. and there wouldn't be politeness yeah there wouldn't be, uh, you know, imagination. You wouldn't. People don't tell stories. People don't make up stories mm -hmm. in that world. So the way they depict it in the film, it's very kind of drab, and people just get what they can. You know, you work and you get some money, and then you mm -hmm. die. <laughs> so that's kind of what it would be like. That's the trade-off for being able to lie through yeah. our teeth like we do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we get all this so. wonderful creativity because lying is, is an option. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've tried to do away with lying in my life in the last few years. Yeah. But it's hard. How, how's, how's that working for you? It's really difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult. But in the end, if you can do it, if you can seize it as a mm -hmm. rule, it actually starts to get better. Yeah. Like all the moments where you used to lie if you tell the truth. You find something on the other side that's very exciting. Yeah. And, 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 so since you've been there, what's, yeah. on, what's on the other side? Well, it, loneliness yeah. and, uh, and poverty. Yeah. And uh, no, but there's a re there's a release. You know, there's a lot of old sayings about. It. I think it was Mark Twain or somebody. They just give everything to Mark Twain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that uh, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Right. right? So it does simplify life that way. Yeah. When you, I'm not asking for specifics unless you want to yeah. offer them. Uh, because I think it's a noble, noble effort on your part to, to try to do away with lying. Mm -hmm. But on those occasions when you find yourself lying, what kinds of things are you lying about? Well, when I was younger, I lied all the time because it's, once you understand the power of lying, it's really like magic <laughs> because you transform reality <laughs> right. for people. Right. If you did something wrong and somebody says, did you do that? You just go, nope, and there, you didn't do it. Uh, and then you, sp you spend a lot of energy maintaining that universe that you've created mm -hmm. through lying, and it's hard. Uh, so I've started, like I had a friend recently say to me, um, did I do something to offend you, mm -hmm. you know? And I was tempted to lie and say, no, of course not, mm -hmm. and continue our false friendship that never really quite worked. Mm -hmm. But instead I said, well, yeah, you alienate me every time I talk to you. You don't, you know, you treat me like equal, and, uh, and I hate being around you. Yeah. So <laughs> I just said it, and he was a little stunned, but uh, we worked it out, Yeah. and we're closer now. Yeah. So I think in the end, it always the truth is better. It's harder, yeah. but it's better. You think that t to your story now, and I'm thinking now of the what, what was the film? Uh, how could I forget it? You can't handle the truth. Tom Cruise, yeah. Jack Nicholson, right? Um, you think people can? You, could we handle being told the truth more often? I mean, I can we actually can we actually handle? I mean, like your friend was stunned when you told me the truth. Yeah. I wonder if we. Everybody says everybody talks about the virtue of being a truth teller. Yeah. But I wonder if we could actually handle being told the truth. I think we could if we did it all the time. I right. think, uh, I don't know about it as a, as a virtue, I'm not sure, because the truth is ugly. So right. most of the time, yeah. it's not a happy thing. But uh, I think we could if it was a habit. If you, it, it, I've started to try to make it a habit. So sometimes you try to find, uh, you pick a truth. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you can do. Yeah, pick, pick a truth. Yeah, I have a, two kids, and my oldest is seven years old. Mm -hmm. And she recently said to me, uh, uh, that she heard it, her, her friend's grandparents got put in an oven in Europe. That's all she was told. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, and she said, uh, is that true? Do people put each other in ovens? Like she asked it that simply. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to say, nope, it's yeah. never happened. Yeah. But I also didn't want to tell her, uh, oh, yeah, sure, that was Hitler in the 40s. And, you know, anyway, and uh, all these millions of people were killed, and now we 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 just blow them up, and uh, it's not even on television because you're watching Survivor. Yeah. Um, but I picked a truth that I could say, which is I don't I don't know if I should tell you that right now. All right. Like rather than making something up, you can also tell somebody. Uh, I I need to hide the truth from you for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, yes, please. <laughs>
So. Well, I, kids, I hear your point, and that, that might be a strategy that works with kids yeah. better, than, better, better than adults. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Could you hear that from somebody? If you ask somebody a direct question about something with high stakes, and they said to you, uh, I don't want to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm uh, not ready to know. Yeah, that'd be tough for me. I'm, I'm one, I'm, I'm one, I want to know. I want to know. Truth. Yeah, me too. I love yeah. truth. I, I, I wish I could know everything yeah. ever. Like, that would be my wish. That's what I hope heaven is, yeah. that they tell you who shot JFK and all well, that you, stuff. <laughs> you want to know everything. Yeah. The truth about everything. Yeah. <laughs> When, when, when did you know that you were that you were funny? When did you know that, that you were going to make a living out of being funny as a stand-up, funny as a writer? When did the funny occur to you? Well, funny was from when I was a kid, I think. Uh -huh. And I was an awkward kid. I didn't wasn't popular. But I could break a class into laughter. Uh -huh. I did that a few times when I was little. I think the first time I ever got a laugh, I was in third grade. Uh -huh. And the teacher was showing us the different parts of the skull. The skull has like three bones in it. Uh -huh. I forget them all. Uh -huh. But he named the first two bones, and he said, does anybody name, know the third bone? And I, I said, the noggin. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody laughed. And that felt incredibly good. Yeah. And that was, to me, an addiction right there. So you've been hooked ever since. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I didn't know you could make a living at it, but I, I just, you know, I didn't, nothing else worked out. Yeah. Did I read, I'm sure I read this somewhere, and I hope I, I don't believe everything I read, but I think this is true. Yeah. English is not your first language? That's right. Spanish. I, I had, I, like, How? <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, no, I don't mean how. I mean, I know yeah. how. I'm just like I. I never, what makes I never that? I, I'm curious. What makes that so so surprising to you? It's just I mean, because you're. I, I guess it's the way that so many of us got introduced to you mm -hmm. comedically. Yeah. I just never, you know, it's possible. Obviously, I just never thought of. Well, know. it's an interesting. I didn't, I didn't process that way. My dad is Mexican. Yeah. And so I'm Mexican. I'm yeah. half Mexican. Uh, it's always been interesting to me. It's been an interesting part of my life experience that. Um, yeah, my dad was a Mexican uh, and moved here. Well, he came here to go to summer school and mm -hmm. met my mother, who's American. But anyway, uh, we lived there for a lot of years. I, li I was born here, right. but we lived there from when I was like a baby till I was about seven years old. Mm -hmm. And that's where still my grandmother, everybody, wow. my whole family's there. Yeah. But because of the way that I look, I wouldn't be pegged as a Mexican, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I'm more Mexican than a lot of people that are known as Mexicans, you yeah. know. There's a comedian named Carlos Mencia who's know, yeah. very, very famous for being Hispanic. Mm -hmm. He's Honduran, German, uh, from California, never lived anywhere else but California. I lived in Mexico. My <laughs> dad's Mexican. <laughs> I have a Mexican passport. I have citizenship there. And you're writing Pootie Tang. That's right. Yeah, see that's this? Right. <laughs> I think that's probably why it didn't connect for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mexico is, uh, and I'm not trying to say this like you don't know anything, but yeah. to, to, to what I understand is that Mexico is like here in terms of uh, racial makeup. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of white Mexicans. Actually, my dad's Jewish, Hungarian, Mexican. You know, we're, it, Mexico's the land of immigrants like here. Mm -hmm. um, but they have more uh, brown people because they didn't slaughter the Indians like we did. Like mm -hmm. they, they didn't do as thorough a job of uh, genociding their Indians. <laughs> so, so the face of the Mexican is more often brown. And also people experience Mexicans as... Uh, that brown guy that comes over and works right. in my house or whatever it is, they don't realize that they're surrounded by millions of white Mexicans and also a lot of white Mexicans who stay in Mexico because they're having a great time because so, white people so went the, everywhere. And all the story is that we're surrounded by Louis C.K.'s. That's right. That we know not of. That's right. Yeah. A lot of white Mexicans. My yeah. cousins are all look like me, yeah. but they don't speak English. Yeah. What, and, and, and the Louis C.K., how did mm. that become your... Moniker. My Hungarian grandfather's name was CK, but it's spelled, it looks like S -Z, it's a mess. It's yeah. S Z E K E L Y, and it sounds like CK, though. Yeah. So I just cut it down. Yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate sure. Because I'd, I'd have a hard yeah, time introducing you tonight. No, you don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> no, never. Um, I, I, I love, all my friends know this, I love Pootie Tang. I mean, it's, it's a classic to me. Um, what do you what do you what do you make of that now with some years behind you looking back on it? Well, it's funny. I I didn't know we were making something that uh, people just love that guy. Yeah. There's something about that character <laughs> people just love, and I love Pootie Tang. I I don't think about him as much as I used to. It was a hard movie to make. Yeah. The studio thought they were making a real like a Austin Powers, and it wasn't that. I was making a very weird little movie. Yeah. But I didn't expect so many people to like it. I, I, I to me, that's my favorite way for a movie to be popular. Yeah. Is this underground thing that most people don't know about, mm -hmm. but people that do are very passionate. Yeah. About it. So yeah, I, I I'm happy yeah. that it's out there. 
Well, see, I, I, I knew I knew you. We met before. Yeah. But having a chance to sit and talk to you, I learned more about you than I ever knew <laughs> about your background and about. <laughs> so now I know the name comes from. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're friends now. Yeah, we are friends. Well, I nice hope so. to meet you, friend. Nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> See you again.